PC Whiz Kid here with the latest from ASRock, the Z390 Phantom Gaming 7. This is an Intel ATX motherboard. Today we have it here in my hands, brand new out of the box. What is there not to like? I tell you, when we first see this, we look at all the gaming armor. Yes, we see the brushed metallic aluminum finish, the stainless steel, the black on black. What is there not to like? I mean, it looks amazing. Considering that the price point is under $200 US, this packs a punch, tons of features. I mean, usually higher end boards, Intel boards, cost quite a bit, right? I mean, we're talking like maybe $400, maybe even more if you really want a 9900K processor to run at 5 gigahertz, for example. But this one here, I mean, check out, check out all these, these features. I mean, yes, it has gold contacts. But it has lots more than just that. I mean, the Gen 2 3.2 USB, awesome. The fact that it has that. The aluminum alloy that they have on there, extra large heat sinks for cooling. We've got high quality capacitors, power chokes. We've got premium alloy. Okay, we're talking about just not just reducing energy, reducing leakage. But we're also talking about being able to comfortably overclock, right? So if you have the latest memory and you want to, you know, get a little bit more out of it, this board is going to be able to do that, right? And again, you're not breaking the bank. So it's about buying smart, buying something that's going to last, and and then buying a CPU that matches, right? You don't want to you buy a a, 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 mid, a mainstream board like this that has tons of features, such as that 2.5 gigabit LAN there for your gaming. Set yourself up for some future proofing there. Obviously, you're going to have support for many more PCI Express slots. We're going to look at this more in detail. I do like the fact that they put armor around that. So, you know, add some strength when you put in your uh, GPU card in there and also for um, removing any interference. Tons of connectors. I mean, look at all the support on this board. But let's home in on the gaming armor first because that's one of the things that just pop out at you, right? You see that brushed aluminum finish and you're thinking, what is under there? Well, obviously the chipset, the Intel chipset's under there, but what else is under there? Well, I went ahead and took it off to basically show you guys what's underneath all of that armor, okay? So when you remove that, it actually reveals the M.2 slots. So you've got two M.2 slots, one on either side of that, and uh, I'm gonna install an SSD drive in there, obviously. There's also an M.2 Wi-Fi slot, should, should you decide to add Wi-Fi to the desktop, and that's great. But um, in this case, I'm just gonna use the LAN, and uh, I took out the uh, armor, as you can see right here, and I added my own SSD, but my SSD had a heat sink on it. So I was lucky, though, that when I installed it here in this slot, the heat sink that this Plexter SSD is using is very thin. So I, actually it fit very nicely on top, the armor. But if you have a thick one, it might not. That's my only beef on that. Other than that, let's move ahead. 128 gigs of DDR4 memory supported on there. I'll be installing 32. Uh, obviously the latest processors that are using the LGA uh, 1151 socket will work on here as long as they're uh, supporting the 300 series chipset, the Z390 that we have here. And uh, well, the IO shield is actually built in on the board, which is great. I, you know, I just, I'm so tired of always installing that separately. This one is already there, good to go. I'm glad that we're moving in that direction. And uh, well, what can I say? This has great sound when it comes to support for uh, the Creative Labs and the sound and your 7.1 surround sound. I mean, these are features that we take for granted. I mean, these are gold capacitors. Look at those, those beauties right there in a the line. So usually, like I said, higher end boards, $400 and up, you get those, those features. Lower end bo boards, you don't. This one is really packing a punch here. Quite a bit of stuff from uh, ASRock on this Phantom Gaming 7 board. So what type of uh, processor would you install in, on here? My suggestion, my recommendation would be to install a nice, Intel Core i5 gaming CPU, right? Six cores, six threads, good to go. Uh, if you're, you know, on a budget, you don't want to spend a lot of money. This one here uh, obviously comes with the essentials in the box. Nothing out of the ordinary. You got your installation manual, software manual. You've got an SLI um, connector there. Should you uh, want to install two 
um, graphics cards, NVIDIA graphics cards and, and together. And you've got your SATA cards, as, uh, cables as well. And, um, well, also the M.2 um, screws that uh, enable you to install your, your additional SSDs in there as well. So that's pretty much it. And the CD, as you can see there in the top corner for your drivers and the utilities. Um, so other than that, you know, again, mainstream board, but it looks great. I installed it in uh, this uh, DIY case. Uh, I made a separate video of this case in case uh, if you're interested, I'll add the link and you can click on that. But here is all that awesome hardware installed in here. This is the latest CPU cooler uh, that I'll do a separate review for you guys on. It's RGB obviously enabled and um, it's going to keep things so cool and quiet in here. I, I actually loved it. It was a breeze to install. Uh, the memory from HyperX, the Fury, wow, it was a cinch. Uh, all I did was slap it in there and immediately the XMP profile was accepted. No issues there on the memory running exactly like it's supposed to. Here it is turned on in all its glory with rainbow colors. Of course, you don't have to have it set up at rainbow. You can have it all blue, which is what I did also. Um, but just to show you the range of colors that you have control to setting things up, it's awesome, right? It's absolutely awesome. The armor, uh, the heat sinks can be controlled to light up differently as well, independently from the addressable RGB uh, liquid cooler that I have here. You can see here I set up everything in blue, right? Blue and white kind of. So uh, again, it's up to you how you want to do it. Special effects, you can add that as well. It's got different effects and modes there that uh, we'll also take a look in a second. Now, the easy mode uh, screen is very nice, but I like the advanced mode in the BIOS, the UEFI uh, screens. So here we are in the advanced screens and it actually enables us to see a little bit better with less clutter and you can see there i'm running the intel core i5 9400 at 3.9 uh, gigahertz i'm locked it in basically so i went through the cpu configuration and um, enabled and disabled certain things as you can see here on the screen to make sure that i had this this system running constantly at 3.9 gigahertz all six cores and that is really more than enough for gaming these days you don't need to have a faster cpu if you want to spend more money go ahead but you don't need to okay and that's what i'm trying to get at this board is great for this now when it comes to the memory the kingston fury very easy to install as well that worked great with the xmp profile that i had temperatures are running really good uh as expected really didn't tweak anything when it comes to the fans you could use the fan tuning um, capabilities of the board and have it uh, set up some limits for you and uh, kick in when uh, certain temperatures reach a certain point but i left it as as is and the system readings are actually quite amazing considering that things are running on default except for the processor which i locked it in at 3.9 gigahertz you can see there low voltage right low voltage on these six cores 65 watt processor so i would expect temperatures to be low and the uh asrock 7390 board the phantom gaming 7 is keeping things super cool and quiet as well uh memory is running stable the 32 gigs of uh, HyperX, as you can see those are the timings and the frequency that i have it set up based on the xmp profile that i mentioned a second ago so obviously in the bias um, the UEFI settings, I went in through there and set it up automatically, boom, put those uh, values for me and the voltage at uh, 1.35 volts. So, temperatures. As you can see there on the right hand side, the core temp is showing me um, that, you know, I'm not really using the graphics card except for recording the screen, so really there is no load on the graphics card. And uh, the system is running basically 30 degrees Celsius. Let's just round it up to 30. It's not even 30 degrees Celsius. Uh, on idle which is great okay and should you run this at full blown you know for different reasons you want to maybe run the processor at a hundred percent obviously the wattage is going to go up right you're going to consume more memory and it's going to get hotter now with the liquid cool that I have in there and the fans set up the way I have them if you set things up smart there's no reason why you can't have things overclocked constantly in your in your system there's no reason why um, you know things can go wrong. This is smart overclocking without breaking the bank, right? Look at the motherboard temperatures. I'm running the system at 100% full load 
the CPU is basically around 42 to uh, 45 degrees Celsius and the motherboard is nice and steady at around 28 degrees Celsius we'll round it up to 30 not even so really good results there with this system as you can see with those voltages I got a, a good power supply too I gotta say the Seasonic power supply that I have is um, keeping keeping the heartbeat going system power usage 55 watts on idle 125 watts when writing prime 95 at 100 percent load and if you run a game uh, at high settings at 1080p well your system will be about 270 watts uh, of usage now when it comes to the RGB and the colors and all of that that I mentioned a second ago the polychrome sync tool can be accessed through the BIOS obviously through the UFI screens the tools I showed you earlier there is a similar screen to this not as pretty but a similar screen that's functional that allows you to control and set these modes however I like the Windows utility uh, better because um, not only is it prettier but I, I believe it gives a, a little bit more user friendliness to setting things up so I'm showing you how you can actually uh, go through the different types of components uh, whether it's an addressable um, RGB uh, component or the actual heat sinks on the motherboard, the covers, and uh, setting those up separately, independently to be a certain color, or you can have them all in sync, all blue, which is what I did just for simplicity's sake. The addressable RGB uh, and everything is set to this water uh, theme uh, that rotates uh, round and round on the uh, liquid CPU cooler. And uh, basically, uh, the um, ASRock uh, heat sinks are glowing in uh, in blue as well. Okay, so to match. So you know, you can you can change this to whatever you want. It doesn't have to be like that. But I thought, you know, why not show you this quickly? Now, what I liked about the board, obviously, being able to install an 1151. Uh, socket based CPU from Intel is great. We don't have to go out and buy brand new uh, CPUs. We can reuse our 8th gen if it supports a 300 series board. The 2.5 gigabit LAN is great. 10 power phase design, great for overclocking, locking things in like I did at 3.9 gigahertz or higher depending on the CPU that you get. The RAM support is excellent. I mean, I overclocked it beyond the XMP2 profile and that's in part two. I'm gonna show you um, a little bit about that as well. But, you know, the features are really, really complete on this board. And, and, and I really want to emphasize that for $200 or less, you can really get a decent gaming PC going as long as you don't uh, spend crazy amount of money on the Intel uh, CPU, which is why I picked the 9400 CPU that you saw right there. So watch part two. Let me know what you think. Comment below. I'd like to thank ASRock for providing it. And again... Thank you for watching.